we have an excellent speaker today, uh, Stuart Levine, uh, who's going to be talking about a very important topic. Uh, I'm excited to be here for multiple reasons. Uh, you know, uh, the topic itself being the primary. So today's webinar is on maximizing meetings. Uh, of course, you know, uh, best practices for management and uh, boards. Uh, little housekeeping before we begin here. Uh, we will be sending you all a copy of today's presentation as well as a link to the recorded webinar. Uh, you are encouraged to type in your questions throughout the webinar presentation in the question box that shows up in the console uh, on your screens. And then uh, we will try and cover as many questions as possible during the presentation, but we'll certainly try and get uh, most of them towards the end of the presentation. So as questions show up, please feel free to punch them in. And uh, with that, uh, I, you know, let me quickly bring in Stuart here so he can say hi to you guys. And I'm going to then introduce him to you guys. Stuart, are you okay. there? Yes, I'm there. Thank you, Perun. Excellent. So, uh, you know, before uh, we uh, get some wisdom dropped on us, uh, you know, from Stuart, you know, I would like to quickly build this up for you guys so you have a little perspective here. I have known Stuart for a few years. In fact, I met him in 2013, I believe, uh, at an NACD conference. He was a speaker there. Uh, a lot of you guys know him from uh, write-ups that he does in various magazines, uh, including Forbes, where he guys writes a regular article. Lots of other syndicated articles uh, contributed by him, but uh, most of all, you know what you guys should know is that you know Stewart leads an organization called Stewart Levine and Associates, and they have uh, you know a product called EduLeader that you're going to learn about. They're focused on helping individuals and organizations to achieve. Uh, they are experts in strategy, uh, strategic implementation, uh, leadership development, and then certainly governance. Uh, Stuart was the CEO of Dale Carnegie Training and for, for the past 20 plus years uh, this consulting practice has uh, certainly you know, been able to provide invaluable education and guidance helping leadership teams and organizations to uh, position themselves for success. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that you know, we've become good friends over the years and you know, he's certainly been a mentor and a guide to our growth and here at Passageways we've benefited a lot from these, uh, you know, interactions that we've had. So, quite excited about what we're going to actually learn today. On that note, I'm going to toss it over to Stuart and let this begin. What do you okay, say? well, thank, thank you, uh, Perun, and uh, on behalf of our firm and uh, EduLeader, uh, I want to acknowledge the hard work of uh, Perun, you and your team in doing something that we all share as a value, which is learning. And it's very interesting that actually today uh, we've got over 350 people registered uh, to join in the conversation. And I think that's an important validation of the subject matter. And I, I want one or two housekeeping notes. Number one, uh, to provide, I'll call it intelligent perspective, we have uh, prepared four questions that will be interspersed throughout the content today. And those will provide all of us a chance to see what uh, the other hundreds of uh, people are thinking in their experience of what we're all uh, feeling in those uh, meetings. And this is such an important uh, topic uh, for us because it, it really defines, in my mind, the sanctity of time. How are we going to deploy uh, our best thinking and, and how are we going to ensure that we have innovation and productivity? And so we're going to share some perspectives today that really come uh, from our life's work, whether it was as a CEO, a current uh, board member of a New York Stock Exchange company, or for that matter, uh, through our work in a, a consultancy. And people frequent, frequently will ask me, you know, how do you really get to understand the culture? And I would argue that if you really study the way people work together in meetings, you get a certain sense of what that culture is all about. And so this is something that is incredibly important. And as we uh, expand our footprint, I'd also like to welcome our co-founder uh, of our uh, EduLeader uh, product and program, 
uh, all the way from Singapore, uh, Elizabeth uh, Perlman, and welcome uh, to you, Liz. So we go to the slide that really starts the uh, conversation, and, and, and basically it comes from Harvard. 40% of managers' time is spent in meetings. Only 39% of uh, meetings achieve their stated uh, objectives. And that's really interesting, that data, because frequently people will talk about how do we be measure effectiveness? What is the metrics? And if you take a look at these two data points, you can start to see the definition of what I will call a financial uh, hemorrhage. Uh, because of the billable time that we all uh, have, we have a tremendous responsibility to call it the 350 people today to get a couple of thoughts that you can take back to your personal and professional lives uh, to be more effective. So when we talk about financial hemorrhage in our work, uh, we look at that as a very serious uh, issue. I would also point out that we'll share some experiences today about board of directors cultures. And, and I will say that if you really want to understand how effective an organization is, you look at that board and as an example, my experience will tell you, if the board meeting is supposed to start at 8 o'clock in the morning, by 7.45, the directors are there and they're ready to go because they really understand their responsibilities, not only as shareholders, employees, and customers, but that, to me, was always instructive in this conversation. And so how do we take that experience from the boardroom throughout an organization is part of our conversation uh, today. So the next slide will talk about transforming uh, your culture. And many of you uh, in your organizations uh, hear people at the top talking about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, improving profitability. It's, it's a very competitive world. You know how complex your life is. And then you hear people, employees and colleagues, all talking about the need for respect. But then we put ourselves in meetings that start late. We have kings and queens of chaos uh, taking too much oxygen out of the room. And I always find it very interesting that, that you know the walls of many organizations are papered with these beautiful posters uh, that talk about respect and dignity. And I'll never forget one day working with a client, and they had uh, one of those big posters, uh, a tranquil a tranquil lake and two people rowing together. And underneath that was a meeting going on that really defined dysfunctionality. So it's not about posters, but it's really about uh, thinking. And it's also about understanding how to save time and stop that financial uh, drain and, and look at profitability in an intelligent way. And so we use an example. If you take 100 managers, and uh, you know you, you bill it out at 2.5 million per annum, uh, you can start to see where the uh, lack of productivity impacts negatively on your organization's, I'll call it, bottom line, and more importantly, your ability to co-create products and services uh, with your uh, customers. And so increasing communication, productivity, and there's something that's really interesting to me. I had a meeting yesterday with a friend of mine who is considering two or three different business opportunities. He's gainfully employed, got a good position, but he's now looking at different opportunities. And one of the recruitment weapons, and I said to him that as you meet with these people, see the way they come prepared to the meetings, see if they're on time, see if they are focused on you during the discussion because you can bet in the, I'll call it honeymoon era, in the engagement period, if in fact they say meet me at one o'clock and they come in late and they're still fumbling papers, chances are good that they're exhibiting the type of behavior throughout that culture. So I think an issue that doesn't get enough discussion in meetings is the way we can firm up our cultures to become recruitment weapons. Next slide talks about profitability further. So we want to talk about strategic results, improved communication, and all of the, let's call it, climate surveys internally. People are always talking about 
communication and understanding, uh, I'll call it clarity. And clarity starts right here uh, at those meetings and it comes from a commitment of people around the table to say, hey, if in fact we're supposed to start on time and end on time and visualize with me the torturous meetings that we all get in and you say, okay, we're going we're gonna to start at 8 and we're going to end at 9 and then there's a bleed, if you will, and it goes another 20 minutes and effectively those 5 or 10 people that are in that room, their day just got uh, obliterated because they have to recapture some of that time. So the execution and the ability for people uh, to come together with some, I'll call it, prearranged uh, way of coming to work together is exhibited right here in those meetings. And so collaboration comes from inclusion and, by the way, a shared understanding of what we're going to be held accountable for. And that's where you get uh, the ownership and the punch list. And, and I would point out, and, and throughout our conversation uh, today, I'll try to give you some counterintuitive thoughts. How many times do we go to a meeting, we leave the meeting, and then the people that were supposed to follow through uh, forget what they had agreed to do? And so what we uh, really talk about with our clients and kind of uh, try to develop those skills is after a meeting, a two or three sentence memo saying here's what we covered and by the way, here's the punch list uh, to go forward. So the next time we come together, uh, you know, here's what I'm going to do, here's what Perun's going to do, and here's what uh, other uh, uh, people at the meeting are going to do. And the cascade effect of behaviors becomes hugely important because that's where uh, values, uh, I think, are expressed. You know, the values of decency and respect, and in fact, they inform the way we behave. And again, we see that uh, in these meetings. Okay, poll question number one, which is interesting. And the way this will work is we'll put up questions like this throughout the uh, conversation today and then you punch in uh, the answers and then hopefully a minute later we'll give you kind of what uh, the hundreds of people have said and here are your choices. Uh, poll question one, what percentage of meetings uh, that you attend have a defined purpose? What percentage uh, of the meetings that you attend have a defined purpose? And the reason that's important, and I'll let you uh, respond, but as you do I'll try to share a couple of thoughts with you. Uh, frequently, uh, it's our experience that when you go into a meeting, uh, sometimes they're routinized. Sometimes people will say, well, I'm not exactly sure why we're having this meeting, but we've had this sales meeting the same way, configured with the same people for a long period of time. And unless we understand what the purpose is, I heard of an incredible uh, story recently from a surgeon friend of mine and, and, a, and a client who basically said, hey, when we get into that operating theater, I always announce that it's all about the patient, it's all about his or her well-being, and it's a clear definition of what the purpose is. And so for me, it's really understanding what is the purpose of the meeting and not being afraid to ask that question. And so we always say when you're formatting an agenda, make sure that you have some clarity around what the purpose of the meeting is and why uh, we're there. And in fact, uh, if you really want to have some fun, think about the dollar resources. You know, the, the metaphor I can use is when you're in a taxi cab uh, in New York City or any place else, you watch that click on the meter. And, and if you're like me, you kind of get nervous and you're, you're watching your uh, capital be deployed right in front of you. Here we bring people together and we're trying to say, and we need to have accountability around it. So let's see what people uh, have to say here uh, and, and what their responses were. Do we have uh, a number there? Okay. So if the number doesn't come up fast, I'm going to move ahead and then give it back to you. Uh, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, what, so what, what I'm seeing here is 5% of the people answered this saying that 0 to 15%. 15% uh, of our you know, audience is saying uh, 60 to 30% of the meetings have a purpose defined. 
21% uh, uh, said between 31 and 50%, and then 29% saying 51 and 75%, and then 31% saying 76 to 100%. So, you know, what I'm seeing here is broadly a third are saying between 75 and 100%, and, uh, you know, a third are saying between 50 and 70%, and the remaining third are saying less than 50 percent. Right. So, Perun, what I take from that data you just shared with us, and we will share this with everybody uh, on the line today, and you'll see it graphically, and this is the type of, I'll call it information you can take back to your colleagues, because it is data. Uh, it shows me if, in fact, we're trying to decouple conversations, be more efficient, here is a tremendous opportunity because if people come into the room and they're not sure what the defined purpose is, then you tell me how we can prepare effectively. So that's poll number, uh, question number one. I go to the next slide, which talks about, you know, mirror how boardrooms operate uh, at, at the highest levels of uh, business. And in, in my experience, what goes on in that boardroom really does become the foundation for the entire organization. And if people act uh, in a clear way and, and, and come prepared and understand what they're about, and I will point out to you, for those of us who serve on boards, something that's, again, very counterintuitive, but I believe very important. Uh, a best practices I can share with you at Broadridge Financial uh, as an example. We get the uh, board book through a portal uh, very similar to uh, Perun's uh, passageways. Uh, you can get it wherever you're traveling in the world, and you have a chance to read it four or five business days in advance, and then the CEO calls each director for, call it 45 uh, minutes or so before the meeting to say, hey, here are the two or three things that we're going to discuss that are really important to me, and by the way, what are your questions, so that the preparation for that meeting is as airtight uh, as you can get it. And so, no uh, joy in surprising people and getting, I'll call it linkage at the highest level and then throughout the organization because then people uh, really feel a responsibility uh, and, and accountable. And then you can learn uh, from people uh, when you come prepared. So the culture shift really occurs in an organization when we put a stake in the ground and I'll share some data later on uh, in the program about how you can do this, and it's incredibly interesting. So if we agree that outcomes are critical, we understand the purpose, and something that, again, becomes counterintuitive, understanding that there is only so much oxygen in the room. And I would say that periodically uh, we will see people that will dominate all discussions. And that's what I consider to be the person with the baton at that particular meeting has to establish, I'll call it, some common sense discussion that says, okay, I got it. You're killing me. I understand it. If we get common language at the meeting, and that means not one of us will dominate all of the meetings all the time. And if you have those situations, I'm a great believer in one-on-one -on -one pulling that person aside after the meeting and saying, hey, look, we have eight other brains in that game, and we need those people engaged. And if, in fact, you consume 90% of the oxygen, it's awfully difficult for us to capture the thinking of other people. And so think about the concept about there is only so much oxygen in the room. And the last one, a, a, a client of ours who uh, I'll call it has tremendous passion for her business, uh, but she would come in and she would wear people out. She would point out, uh, frankly, a lot of things that were wrong in the organization and in our conversations, uh, we got the conversation to go in the direction of saying, okay, what are the two or three questions that you want to be answered in the conversation as opposed uh, to reading the Declaration of Independence? And so defining two or three questions means that I have to understand the purpose of the meeting why I'm coming in there, and then to prepare uh, so that if I walk out with two or three pieces of information that will help me function at a higher level, then it's been a good use of the time. The next slide talks about mirroring how boardrooms operate. And agendas become really critical. And those agendas are well, really well thought out. And by the way, people get time slots. 
and and again, this is part of a I'll call it a new discipline that really smart organizations embrace. And they say, okay, you know, we're going to ask you to present on cybersecurity. And by the way, you have 30 minutes. And cut the deck in half because invariably some people will ask questions. And that doesn't mean we can't bring back the issue of cybersecurity. But I think concentrated view on time frames becomes critical and never sacrifice the well-being uh, of the organization with dysfunctional uh, behavior. And there's a phrase that, that wraps around in my mind a lot, which is cultural creep of uh, mediocrity. And that means that if, in fact, we're going to be, uh, I'll call it, uh, engaged in, in uh, sideways conversations, uh, it's very difficult uh, to compete effectively today. So cultural creep means bad behavior uh, as opposed to, uh, and we spend a lot of time in the healthcare and life sciences uh, business, that if you understand the focus, then you really don't tolerate uh, mediocrity in conversation. And then you kind of liberate yourself and have some time uh, for uh, innovation and, and creativity. So it's even in the operating theater, if we can be more efficient in the operating theater, I'm telling you, uh, health care and patient outcomes get better because there's less fatigue of the surgeons, less fatigue of the uh, clinical people in that theater, and more focus on, I'll call it efficiency and proper outcome. And then we come to a, another critical factor called pre-meeting, okay? And, and why meeting manage becomes important. And, and again, um, a lot of people think this is so easy, it's so counterintuitive. And you will hear people say, well, you know, I, I, I do this, I understand this. But the, the fact is, the best organizations do it uh, all the time. And so focused agendas uh, at, that are distributed well in advance. We're not in the business, and we shouldn't be in the business, of, I'll call it playing gotcha. We're in the business of inclusion, of building together, and moving forward. Okay. And, and the, uh, Perun, I believe you're going to take the next slide on the discussion of uh, the edge leader. Yes, okay. I'd be happy to do that. Um, I, you know, uh, and I'll let Conoco catch up, to catch up to the edge leader slide. While we are doing this, you know, it reminds me of a conversation I had. I served on a hospital board, the head of neurosurgery at Indiana University. In one of the conversations we were having, he said, when uh, a neurosurgeon uh, enters, uh, you know, the operating theater in their hospital, they have made it a rule that you can't even sip on uh, Coke or coffee. Uh, and these are often five, six hour long, you know, surgeries that they are performing, sometimes even longer. But they have come up with their own rule just so that you're, uh, you know, you actually really are all dialed in. And I think some of that has to happen. You have to come up with your own ways to get everybody focused. Uh, that said, you know, I'm going to, I'm excited about the next segment here. Uh, Stuart is going to talk about uh, EduLeader, which is a product that, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, their uh, organization is uh, pulled together based on lots of research, uh, you know, over the years. Uh, it's based around a model called PLAN. PLAN is an acronym. He's going to talk about that. Uh, EduLeader is actually really just a, a, a lot of rich content designed to create uh, some forward-thinking, innovative, you know, cultural changes. Uh, you know, this is what we have internally looked at here at Passageways to expand our leadership capacity, and we've certainly been able to gain from it. So I'm excited about this next section here about EduLeader. Okay. Okay. So thank you, Perun. We'll go to the next slide. And, and fundamentally, uh, this uh, kind of moves us into areas of what I'll call skill development. Because for any number of reasons, we all have uh, advanced degrees and, and the appropriate education. But the notion of having skills, I believe, is a differentiator for every uh, one of us. And so P uh, in the plan is, is the purpose, OK? We, we discussed having a defined purpose. Uh, starting with the end in mind means 
whoever is organizing the meeting, let's be really clear on what we have to, uh, we have to achieve and then what are the issues that we have to discuss before the meeting and, by the way, ask for feedback. An, a counterintuitive uh, idea, but in planning, I believe it's a continuum. And so after the meeting, uh, it doesn't take much to just send out a, a two or three line uh, note to people saying, by the way, you know, one to five, how do you feel the meeting went? And by the way, any ideas on how we can accelerate the distribution uh, of content? And so P is for the purpose. And we go to the next slide, we talk about uh, L which is uh, how, how do we line up? And uh, one of the, the real interesting issues to me is if you study meetings, and we're involved in an organization right now where it uh, happens to be a large uh, hospital, and the CEO said, you know, uh, I'm a new CEO and we've had this particular council meet forever, and we're not sure we have the right people at the table, and we have uh, you know, a lot of conversation that's not particularly accretive. So for me, I think it's a fair question to ask, do we have the right people at the table? I remember years ago uh, working with a CEO of a large credit union in the country. I was meeting with the CEO uh, in his conference room, and uh, executive vice president popped in, and it was clear that we were having a pre-meeting and a conversation and the executive vice president showed incredible character and he said, oh, am I early for the meeting? In other words, he was just as happy to get 20 minutes back. And so sometimes you have to ask yourself and then ask your team, who exactly should be at the meeting and what are those assets that should be there, okay? And so something that has come up, which is an incredible, I'll call it breakthrough, uh, Perun, uh, based on the Edge Leader pro product, uh, in, in a very large health system in a particular region of this country where they're driving this uh, skill development out throughout uh, their professional staff. And they have now made a commitment, and the CEO has reported back to us a couple of days ago, actually, that they've made a decision to take the standard one-hour meetings and say, our new discipline will be 45 minutes. Now, that's kind of interesting because now you're starting to see movement that says, okay, let's take a look at who's in the meeting, what we're trying to achieve, and how can we be more efficient with each other, and are we creating clear and focused agendas that are distributed? And I would argue, again, that there are consequences that are serious in the culture if, in fact, uh, we are not serious about the discipline of starting and ending on time and allocation of that time. And distributing in advance is, again, something that's very subtle, but in my, my experience is very important. You can tell if the agenda's been prepared, who comes prepared, uh, it, whether it's been distributed, rather, in advance, and then who comes prepared to the meeting. And if people are looking to have, I'll call it, better careers, earn some more recognition, it's coming prepared to those meetings as opposed to some lax, uh, you know, half-baked idea. We have another poll question for you. What percentage of meetings uh, do you attend are absolutely uh, necessary? And that one's a really interesting one to me because it, it, we're coming into a new year, and I'm not the, very large on resolutions, but I am large on reflections. And I think looking at in the mirror and saying, okay, we've got a more demanding, more sophisticated uh, patient population, member population, customer base, and we have limited resources to move forward. And in fact, how are we going to do that? And I think one of the ways we do that is asking ourselves internally what percentage of meetings that we attend are absolutely necessary. And then you can see the choices, 0 to 15, 16 to 30, 31 to 50, and so forth. And those pieces of data will give you some ideas uh, that will say to you uh, that's, that's an area that we can uh, really improve on. And yep. so, um, Perun, you want to share what you're seeing out there in data now? 
Yeah, and I hope that you guys can see our screen as well. We'll share the poll results one way or the other with everybody. It seems like, you know, 3% um, of the population is saying 0 to 15% are necessary. 22% um, feel that 16 to 30% of the meetings are absolutely necessary. Uh, and 24% of the population is saying 31 to 50%, and then 31 says 51 to 75%, and 20% say that 76 to 100%. So basically, you have a fairly even uh, split here between various segments. Right. And, and again, if the meetings aren't really critical or they're not productive, you could ask yourself, Perun, why are we meeting? Okay. And, and that's a good question, particularly in the last quarter of, the, of this calendar year. And so that brings us to the next slide, which is A, which is ACT. And, and I guess that's the call to arms. So thinking clearly and acting effectively means that we're going to be respectful of the sanctity of time, which again, this is a big shift. And I believe it's got to start at the top of an organization to say, okay, we're going to start to adopt a new way of living, a new way of working together. And when you have an agenda that's thought out and it's clear, then we can act effectively. And part of that, uh, we were involved in a discussion uh, in a strategic plan at large healthcare institution very recently. And, and what we said to the, I'll call it core team is, as we move down the path, your responsibility will be to take the contents of the discussion and share it with three or four of the people uh, in your area of professional responsibilities. And for me, it's a very fundamental issue, but around communicating directly and then getting common language and something we use all the time, which is the phrase, I got it. And if you establish that and say, you can say to some of your colleagues tomorrow, hey, you know, I attended this excuse me, seminar, and, and we were talking about the need to get common language. And one of those words, which is never meant to be disrespectful, is somebody says, I got it, so that you can save yourself, uh, I will call it 10 and 20 minutes per meeting. If somebody's made that point, somebody can just say, okay, I got it. And, and I think that's a really important uh, signal for people, and it sets ground rules, okay? And then, of course, the starting on time we got, keep meetings on, on track uh, by taking conversations offline. And let me tell you how that works. If something gets more complex than you have the time, I really believe that we can say, OK, Prune, let's take that one offline. Let's have a conversation. And let's see where we're going. The, the real advanced program on acting is not only I got it, but then if somebody won't stop to be able to say, you're killing me. And I was working with a CEO many years ago, uh, and he was about to tell me the same story for the fifth time. And I put my hand up, and uh, he had a, a baseball bat next to his uh, desk. Not too smart. I'm not recommending this particularly. And I said, you know what? You're killing me. You're totally killing me. And I hit the floor with his bat. Fortunately, uh, I didn't break it because it was a Mickey Mantle signed bat. But the point of that is, uh, after that, we had common language. So I could say I got it. And then if he didn't stop, I could say, you're killing me. And I think in meetings, don't let the kings and queens of chaos, the people that uh, aren't doing their homework, uh, I'll call it spending too much time in their own world, uh, control our productivity and our ability uh, to move our organizations uh, forward. I'd like to go to poll three, poll question three. And this one is a killer. <clears throat> so what percentage of meetings that you attend both start and end on time? What percentage of meetings uh, that you attend and start and end on time? And, and when Perun spoke earlier about distributing the contents, uh, we, we tell you, you can share this with your colleagues to begin that conversation. And I will tell you, these are skills that people need to develop, and, and it becomes I'll call it definitional for our uh, productivity. And, and the key, I think, and I look at my career and the way I came up at Dale Carnegie, person I used to report to, we used to have random meetings every day at lunch. And then one day it struck me because we would end up talking about baseball, ice hockey, and other things. And I wouldn't get to the core issues. I needed approval of people's pay raises and so forth. And I started to develop an agenda. 
and uh, we would still have the same sandwich, but then uh, we were able to get to the issues that uh, we needed to. So Perun, uh, what's your take on the uh, data we're now seeing? Yeah, this is interesting and expected as well. Uh, we have 17% of the uh, responses are saying 0 to 15%. Uh, and then 20% of the, uh, the population is saying 16 to 30% of the meetings actually both start and end, end on time. 23% mm -hmm. feel 31 to 50%. And then 20%, uh, only a fifth of our audience is saying 51 to 75% of the meetings start and end on time. And 19% uh, you know, uh, feel that 76 to 100 percent of the meetings start and end on time. It is significant that, you know, 17 percent, the least number of people say 0 to 15 percent start and end on time, and then the second lowest number of people feel that, you know, uh, 76 percent of them or above uh, meetings actually start and end on time. So there's lots of people in the middle of the pack. And, and, and therein lies, uh, we have discussions all the time over here with uh, Harriet, and, and what we discuss is how can we help people be uh, ultimately more productive? And when you look at this data and you think about, I will call it the wasted energy and the bad feelings that are engendered every time you and myself sit there, <clears throat> excuse me, waiting for a meeting uh, to begin, uh, it, it, it really, I call it, damages uh, the culture and defines uh, the culture uh, in so many ways. So I go to my next slide. We talk about uh, A is for acting again. And again, if we're starting late and people generally uh, are not optimistic and uh, they're not, they won't embrace what we're doing today, which is learning and learning from each other. So infusing meetings with uh, energy uh, creates, uh, I'll, I'll call it, a good uh, culture and a learning culture. And one thing that's so counter, uh, counterintuitive and very productive is when you start those meetings, make sure you thank people and thank people and encourage them for being on time. And then uh, one of the things that I think is important for all of us in meetings is to read the impact you are having uh, on other people. Uh, we're all leaders. Uh, people that are registered here are phenomenally successful people. But we have to really get better at reading the impact you're having on other people. And then you'll know when to uh, stop and, and, and recalibrate and ask for questions. And then uh, you'll have more time for collaboration and listening uh, to others. And one way to do that is to share some intelligent content prior to the meeting and take five minutes and ask people to respond so that you start the meeting uh, with some content that relates to what we're talking about. And then ensure the organization's uh, mission. You would be shocked if you sat with me all day long and dealt with clients and when you ask what the mission is, uh, everybody's got a different uh, point of view and I would say uh, that's not helpful uh, because understanding the mission is the foundation. It really is the foundation and the purpose that we're uh, in in that in, in that particular meeting in that organization, and to make sure that we share knowledge in a in a free way, and then link your uh, agendas to uh, intelligent decision making. Next slide and or next steps. So uh, make sure every meeting ends with clear next steps. I, I, to me, uh, I was on a board of a, uh, a corporation uh, for a number of years, family-owned business, very successful. But one thing that we, we had difficulty was after every board meeting, uh, somehow it, it became very amorphous as to what we agreed that we wanted management to follow up with, whether it was compensation, whether it was sales and marketing. So for me, having that punch list with next steps and the memo that goes out after is an incredible exercise in accountability. And you can ask whoever is responsible for the meeting that within 24 hours uh, we are going to uh, circulate uh, a memo about the content and then what the next steps are, okay? And that's what the uh, accountability the accountability issue is. And if you talk to senior leaders all day long, they're talking about how the heck do we get more accountability. 
And I will talk, I, I would share with you, based on some experience, that this is, this is the epicenter. The accountability starts with reminding people. People aren't bad. It's just that they forget, they get distracted, they have things going on. So that's where uh, accountability comes in. And then the next, state, uh, next step template is who's accountable and what is the due date. And, and I like specificity because if I make a commitment to get a report to you, uh, then I have that responsibility. And things happen. And so if I can't hit that, then I owe you a couple of days in advance saying, hey, I couldn't get it done for the following reason. But we now start to raise the level, and I'll call it the standards of accountability. And then asking colleagues for, for uh, feedback. And we see that in board work in a board assessment. And sometimes it's not so much fun to look in the mirror. Uh, if you're like me, some days you have a bad hair day, and some days you have a good one. But it's important to look in the mirror, ask for feedback, and then have a, uh, a debrief. And I would say, again, for the, those of us on boards, uh, I'm a major league proponent to executive sessions right after uh, the board meeting. I was a lead director of a, uh, of a uh, company. And what our best practices was uh, that we would uh, fundamentally uh, go into executive session uh, right after the meeting while it was still fresh in people's mind. We'd go around the table, and we were done with it. OK, so now I'm on to meeting smarter, uh, create culture shifts. And again, uh, you know, I think it, it's fair to say that people hate meetings for a reason. Uh, they are mind-numbing. Uh, every conversation should have a, a purpose. And uh, at a certain point, you recognize when it's all been said. Meetings meet smarter. Next slide talks about cultural shifts. Not every meeting has to go an hour, 120 seconds an hour and then master that crisp distribution of a 10-minute meeting. And, uh, you know, count noses and stay in touch. The effective meeting, uh, creating the agenda we spoke to you about, defining the purpose, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, staying with that agenda because that helps keep uh, the, the content on track, and then having an honest discussion with people about uh, the behaviors and understanding the deployment of, uh, I'll call it, human capital becomes uh, really critical. So here are some things to think about. Effective meeting. One, get some common language. I got it. You're killing me. Infuse the meetings with energy. Go for buy-in. Have a discussion. And then assign accountabilities. All right? Poll question four. What percentage of meetings that you attend achieve their objectives? What percentage? Uh, achieve their objectives. And again, if you're looking to get insights into your culture, I would say this one also is very descript uh, descriptive. Because if you take the billable time, and so you can see on your screen 0 to 15, 16 to 30, 31 to 50, 51, 75, and so forth. But what percentage of meetings uh, that you attend uh, hit their stated objectives? Let's do that real fast and see what we come up with. Uh, we have 30 seconds already out of the way. We'll wait for another 10 seconds to finish this up. And, Thank you. Uh, then we'll close this out. So last five seconds. Here we go. Getting closer. Okay. We have about 63% of the vote in. Let's close this out. That's good. Thanks, Varun. Oops. Let's, can you put the slide up there again, Varun, or is that perfect? There you so, go. Varun, what, what's your takeaway on that? So this is interesting. I think, you know, everybody should have this particular poll done in their organization. So we have only 3% of the people saying 0 to 15%. 12%, um, you know, chose 16 to 30%, uh, you know, meetings are achieving their objectives. 23% are saying 31 to 50. Uh, quite a big number, 45% of the people are saying 51 to 75% of the meetings are meeting their objectives. And that's impressive. And then 16% feel that a vast majority, more than 75% of the meetings are meeting their objectives. So right. more than half of them feel, you know, at least 50% of the meetings are hitting the mark. Right. Yeah, really interesting. And again, uh, Perun, sometimes just asking the question tells you how well your organization uh, is functioning. 
And again, you can see the data just like we, we are seeing it. And those are, I'll call it, serious opportunities uh, to strengthen uh, your culture. So the next slide, it talks about the EduLeader a bit. And it's a consolidation of our, uh, our conversation, which fundamentally is an effective tool that increases, and this is a leadership uh, capacity. I gave you an example earlier where uh, we had one client that now has made a decision uh, to move all one-hour meetings to uh, 45 minutes. And to me, uh, that creates an incredible amount of uh, energy. And in fact, they've tripled the number of people that are now coming to their meetings uh, uh, to, uh, I'll call it, participate most effectively. It happens to be in the healthcare arena. But it shows you that not everybody has had the benefit of a discussion on leadership development that may sound, uh, you know, something that we all know, but it's really tough to effectuate every day. And so I wanted to just share that, I'll call it success and breakthrough, and, and you get common language throughout thousands of people uh, in one uh, time. Next slide, please. And so the effective meeting management program, <clears throat> one year post training, we like to look at data here. So look at what happened. Uh, creating sustainability and resilience when people in the culture embrace these new standards. Now 45% of the people increase using agendas. Attend meetings up 41%. Correct and the right people at the table, 39%. Uh, meetings starting and ending on time, 38%. Think of all the money you can save in having those meaningless posters around the wall, wall, walls when we start to act together. And then the last one is, uh, if you'd like to know, learn more about uh, the Edge Leaders, uh, one and a half hour online meeting management program to save you money, uh, you can just call us or contact us at info, info uh, at Edgeleader. And we do have a special offer uh, for participants in the webinar uh, today if you, uh, I'll call it, contact us uh, in the next uh, week. Faroon, I believe you got the next slide. Yes, okay. thank you. Uh, so, you know, Edu Leader is a great philosophy to really kind of just, you know, uh, push your organization to really kind of get uh, to make meetings more effective. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is the the basis on which we continue to innovate. We are, of course, a software company. We have a product called Onboard uh, that Stuart was referring to. If you go to www.passageways.com, you'll see uh, Onboard as one of our key products. It is essentially built around board meetings, uh, but we find lots of customers using our product for. Uh, you know, management meetings and department meetings and planning meetings as well. It is interesting uh, and, you know, somewhat uh, in sync uh, as I see the world. Essentially, you know, uh, Stuart and, uh, you know, uh, SLA is uh, recommending that every meeting should be approached as if it is a board meeting. Well, that is essentially uh, guaranteed if you used a platform like Onboard, uh, which allows you to put out an agenda ahead of time, uh, really have uh, you know, collaboration around the agenda, all the different sections, make, uh, you know, information available, ahead, you know, uh, as, as so far in advance that people come prepared. And, you know, you could actually, really, you know, certainly because it's a board meeting platform, it allows you to uh, rec create records of your votes and your, you know, uh, sig uh, you know e-signatures that you require from your board and all of that. It is uh, a platform built for every device that you can possibly imagine iPhones, iPads, uh, and such. And I, I think if your organization is thinking about meetings, which clearly you self-select yourself by signing up for this webinar, you should also think about not just the philosophy around the meeting, but what, what is going to be the platform that helps you on that path, and Onboard could be that. Uh, I think, you know, if you need more information about Onboard, you could certainly, uh, you know, indicate that uh, right at the end of the webinar. We are going to be sending out a quick survey that's going to allow you to really indicate your interest in both EduLeader um, as well as Onboard and that'll be good. You could also send an email to sales at passageways.com. Um, you know, I should uh, quickly mention that this platform is being used by, um, you know, uh, in fact, we serve more than 650 organizations worldwide. Uh, we, you know, certainly have 
lots of really key information that was shared here through the polls. Um, you know, even as we look at this self-selected audience, which is very nuanced, you know, to begin with, because you guys are already thinking about meetings, there is so much, uh, you know, wood to chop, if you will. You know, there's so much more to be done here. Uh, you need, uh, you know, you need to work with organizations, uh, you know, that actually are essentially good at this. I'm going to actually, you know, uh, quickly get to the questions here. Stuart, do you have any, have any closing comments here before I try to wrap this up and bring it home? I, I would just say, uh, kind of in conclusion, that uh, it's time for people to take control uh, of their leadership lives and define themselves. And I think you define yourselves uh, by running effective meetings and uh, embracing some standards that uh, acknowledge that our words and our actions have consequences. So thank you, Perun, and uh, all of your colleagues at Passageways for our work today. Yeah, but we're not done yet. So, you know, uh, I, I would like to sincerely thank Stuart for, you know, sharing all this great information with us. Uh, obviously, there's some deep knowledge on effective meeting management uh, here. These, uh, you know, processes uh, that, that were shared today will help position organizations to achieve uh, you know their strategic objectives and ensure accountability. Uh, you know, as a leader, I feel that's the part that becomes the most uh, you know challenging. Uh, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, for most organizations, uh, you need something that is actionable and practical, and that's what you got to hear about today. Uh, you know, Stuart Levine and Associates and Edu Leader provides the right deliverables for today's challenges and help you create true learning and leadership development. Uh, that's clear from, you know, Stuart's background and everything else that they've done. Uh, you know, at this point, uh, you know, we're going to take on some questions, but, you know, it's truly an honor to be uh, collaborating with uh, Stuart Levine here uh, today and have, uh, you know, such great information be shared. I know that there are a few questions, so we're not done yet. Upon completion of this webinar, please don't forget to take a short survey. Uh, we will be. The most popular question we've been getting is, are we going to share the slides? Are we going to share the data? We are going to share both the slides as well as the polls, data that we collected and generated here. We are happy that we had more than 100, uh, you know, close to 150 people actually were on the call, and lots of the poll questions got 65, 70% polls. So that's pretty, uh, you know, statistically relevant data set that we have generated here, and we'll be sharing that. Uh, you'll also see our contact information and web addresses below. Uh, we encourage you to actually reach out and start your transformation journey, you know, as quickly as possible. Uh, we'll now answer some questions, uh, and we have just a few uh, coming in here. Uh, let's see what do we have. Well, hey, Perun, one, one, you're good, shoot. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, one thought. Uh, I know we'll get questions that we will not get a chance to answer a fulsome way uh, on our webinar, and I would commit on behalf of our firm and, and yourself, that if people send us emails, that I will respond to them personally uh, and try to uh, help. And I would also encourage people uh, to take the content and share it with one of their two colleagues, because I think this is the way the journey uh, begins. And it's, it's a tough pivot, but it's an important pivot. And I would like to say the same, actually. If we got questions, we'll be happy to answer those, you know, directly. And, uh, you know, it's always insightful to hear back from you guys. Uh, one of the things that, I, you know, comes to mind is, uh, you know, in fact, this is a question I'm getting here. Is there a way to organize this session uh, for the rest of your management team? That's a great question. Stuart, uh, you know, uh, what do you think of it? I think, I think that's a really important question because I think common language denotes that it's not just you as an individual. And the answer is yes, absolutely, that we can organize uh, a way for uh, teams of people. And in fact, the program is uh, developed uh, you know, for online learning together. So the answer is yes. And if they just drop us a, uh, a note at slevine, stuartlevine.com or uh, to uh, our other website at the Edge of Leader, we'll we'll get back to those people that are asking that question. We can help those people and facilitate that that journey. Yeah, 
another question, you know, it seems like Brock from Honda Federal Credit Union has a question, uh, you know, the hands raised. If you have a question, either you should, uh, we've just sent you an audio opinion, you should actually voice the question or you could just type it in and I'll be happy to ask you that question. Another question I'm getting here real quick, I'm trying to, you know, sneak this in. Uh, the question is, you know, what kind of preparation does one need to get started on the edu leader side? Is it just sign up and go, or do we need to? Is there a big rollout and, and such? How many I, how many organizations how many people from the organization are needed to get started? Well, you know, you certainly can start with a uh, I'll call it a uh, team of uh, ten or twenty people. Uh, but what I would say is, uh, Peruna people uh, send us an email. Uh, the president of edu leader Harriet Levine. Uh, will be happy to help people organize. She's very good at that, uh, organizing teams that begin that journey. And so if they uh, drop her a note at our uh, email address, uh, Harriet Levine, will de she's president of the firm, she will definitely respond. She's got some really great experience and great results with clients as well. Good. And now I have the last question. This is a tough one. I, I'm interested in knowing this too. What happens if the boss is arriving late for the meetings uh, and what effective rules can be set for meetings? You know, uh, I think the second, the latter is a more generic question. But you know, uh, what if the 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 boss is coming late? How do you get around that? I, I think at a certain point, uh, I'm a great believer in one-on-one -on -one discussions. And if in fact the boss is coming late with great regularity, uh, somebody one-on-one -on -one goes into his or her office and says, "Hey, look." And I've been in those situations as an outside consultant um, where I sit down with the uh, CEO and say, look, you're probably not aware of the impact, and I know you're busy. But the truth of the matter is we had 20 people waiting for 20 minutes, and I ran the financial uh, metri <clears throat> metrics on it. So I think sometimes a respectful discussion, and then maybe say to that CEO, uh, maybe you don't need to be there for all of the meetings, and let's discuss the purpose of the meeting so that it's not embarrassing. I would never take on, I'd never recommend uh, taking on that person in front of the full team of 20, but I think some person, some leader in that group having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with, call it the CEO or the boss, and saying, hey, this is the impact your actions are having, because frequently our experience is that nobody's had the decency to point that out and link it to the financial productivity and effectiveness of the organization. Very good. You know, uh, we're talking about ending on time. We're, the clock just actually is uh, ticking for exactly the end of the webinar. I would like to actually say, keep the questions coming. You know how to get reach us. We'll be happy to answer these. And one last time, thank you guys. You've been great. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Stuart for being such a good sport. And we hope to actually do more of these together. Thank you. Thanks, Perun. Best to you. Bye. Bye.